Hi there, it's the, um, this is the Fort Diary, it's the 15th of March uh, 2012. Um, better get a move on making this film or the, uh, the world will be ended before uh, it's out there. What I wanted to do with, the, with this one actually is, uh, there have been some other uh, video um, diaries but they're, they're not uploaded because they contain bits of uh, the, the sort of script and, uh, and, and various key moments in the film and that sort of thing. So I didn't want to upload them because really they'll be spoilers. So, um, and I'm always thinking about what I'm saying anyway, just in case I, you know, I don't want to give too much away about the, um, uh, about, about the plot. Um, so, uh, anyway, so what, what this one's about is the, uh, some of the technology used for uh, recording uh, audio and uh, video um, in, in the film. What I'll do is start off with the audio. Uh, what, what we've got here is the... Um, uh, on, on top here is the Rode um, NTG2 uh, microphone. Uh, it's, uh, it's 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 kind of uh, th there's a couple of others sort of higher than this. This has actually got the wind uh, shield on, which uh, I mean it's a basic uh, cover actually. This I'll just take that off so you can see the mic itself, and it's mounted in this sort of suspension uh, elastic uh, grip. You see. So um, the pole could be knocked a bit or something like that, but it, but it would it would just maybe slightly move the mic, but it wouldn't create a, a sort of physical contact and that's come up on, on the sound recording. Um, and, and I'm sure there's lots of other technical details I don't know. I'm certainly no sound expert, expert as you'll soon hear in this blog. Uh, but that's the point really. It's a, it's a whole learning process and hopefully these will be useful to other filmmakers. So um, I went for the NTG2, you know, it's, it's pretty cheap. I, I got it for, um, I think it's uh, under, under 130 or something um, with all the, all the trimmings. So I was quite, quite pleased with that. And the jump to NG3, NTG3 is too big, it's too big. When you get the NTG3 kit, you're really looking at about 700 all in sort of thing. Um, it's a fantastic uh, bit of kit. Um, the NTG3, particularly in adverse weather conditions, but really, you know, if, if, if it's your sort of really first go and you really need something better than what's on a DSLR uh, inbuilt mic on a on a 7D, for example, um, or a 5D for that matter, but you know, it's it's okay, but it's not that great. You know, you really need something a bit better, especially for making uh, something you'd like uh, to distribute and. Uh, um, particular feature anyway like I'm doing so really you need to plug a mic in this actually um, you have an XLR cable coming out of the back in here which I haven't plugged in um, that's the format it's just called XLR it's just a, a format type so um, there's the male pins there so you put the female XLR on there uh, and uh, and this is actually mounted the microphone is just this bit here uh, it's, a, oh, it's got a shotgun microphone ultra directional um, very sensitive sort of direct uh, to the front, I think it's a bit out the back and a tiny amount out the sides. Um, so you know, you really do point this. Although that's a general rule for microphones, as I understand anyway. You know, I'm sure people um, <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong, but you know, you point the thing. Um, but but it's an, but you know, the NTG2 is a great um, great reviews. Uh, you know, for the money, you can't knock it really. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, already done some little tests with it. You know, really really pleased with it. But that. that uh, uh, just to um, point something out here, this is actually on a boom, this is a 3 metre boom uh, pole, so it um, telescopically pulls out. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually lock it, I've tried moving these things, it seems to hold it sturdier, but I'm not sure if that's the, that's the point. But, um, but it's, it, it's, it's a good smooth movement, and uh, it's got little sort of rubber uh, rings here, I guess, to, to um, prevent any... Uh, knocking and therefore extra sound on set, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, there's, um, you know, there's a road as well. Here's the, here's the name, um, he says. And um, uh, so, so, you know, I just, I just got the boom as well, and it's got these little Velcro things again for the for the lead, I guess. Um, you know, the lead's going to come down here, so you can sort of Velcro it down. Uh, we're going to do some proper t t testing, really, uh, and. and uh, Make sure we know how it all works. Fortunately, there's a few people in Seven Five Productions quite familiar with um, using a boom. Um, yeah, I'm certainly no expert. I've only done it a couple of times, I think. So, um, uh, but I've been reading up a great deal about it, about uh, sort of best practice and that sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, pleased with that. So, uh, um, you know, it's a three-meter pole. I'm sure it's enough. 
and uh, we're going to stick with it. I'm not going with lapel wireless, like funny names, lavalier, I think they're called, um, uh, microphone types. You know, it's all going to be um, recorded on the uh, shotgun. So, um, and uh, you know, and that's the little windshield. For There's some better versions of this. This is sort of what came with it. I'm sure it does a pretty good job anyway. But you can get what's called, um, people call them, there's various names. You see this sort of fluffy, furry um, caterpillar thing. Some people call it a dead cat. And I notice on the on the road packaging, they call it dead wombat, <laughs> which is what they stick on there. So I think roads are Australian manufactured. So, uh, but that's the, that's the mic. That's picking up the sound. So what's recording it? Well, in this little pouch here, um, is the Zoom uh, H4n. Uh, this is a, uh, a very industry standard sort of digital recorder. It seems to have taken the market by storm. And I, 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 uh, all, my, all the research I've done on the net, um, you know, most um, people really point to this as a, as a great all-round device, especially for the you know this sort of uh, you, you know it is it is. I think it was I think it was about two hundred pounds or something. So it's not you know it's not cheap. Um, and uh, but you know, it's an all-round you know quality device. You know, I never wanted to really skimp on the old sound, or at least you know, not 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 you know, just spend. Um, you know, you can get a little Olympus, you know, digital voice recorder type device, you know, for thirty pounds or something. It's, it's just not a that's a no go really. Um, th th this again, I'm not a sound expert. Thanks to um, uh, couple of people really, especially uh, Dave Pearson, uh, a uh, computer chemist, who's written some original music for the, um, or, um, put together some original music for the fort. Uh, he's, he's, he's a sound expert um, and uh, you know I sort of discussed at length with him about sort of stereo, mono, recording and four channel and, and all this sort of thing and I'm certainly a lot more up on it thanks to him and, and a lot of reading I've done plus just a lot of testing um, just just trying it out I'm watching it. there's a lot of YouTube videos on uh, net that's really useful resource you know don't forget about that really if you go on YouTube and just type in zoom h4n testing or, 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 or just zoom H, h4n um, you get a load of uh, videos where people have just just shown you how, how well it records sound how well it um, works with with the sort of redhead um, or, or, or dead cat thing on top um, for, for windshielding, um, you know, and also the different formats. It's a good resource, YouTube. So uh, what can it do? Well, it can record just in 101 different formats. I think it literally is about 100. Um, it, it there's under, underneath there is called the XLR input. So there, uh, the um, uh, that, that's where the the end of the mic goes in with the, uh, with the cable. Cables in the other room. Actually, I should have brought it anyway. But so the, the pins there, so female XLR to male XLR in the back there, and uh, and that's the cable you need. The one I've got is actually blue, um, a blue cable. Uh, really, just so it stands out in the in the sort of box. I've got so many cables, as you can imagine. Um, so the opportunity to get different coloured ones is uh, quite handy, really. Uh, and and you know the blue will always be for, you know for the zoom effectively. So you can have. Um, you know, there's plenty of technical detail about this on the net. I'm not going to go into it mainly because I don't understand it all. Um, you know, you know, it's just I, I'm just understanding the basics of it, so I, you know, can plug it in and stuff. But someone else will be sound recorder, okay? So and boom operator. Uh, you, you've got these sort of crossed uh, mics here. Uh, you can switch. Um, I, I think um, the, the sort of width from uh, to, what was that, 80 to 90 to 120. So that's the sort of feel that it's picking up in, uh, as, as far as I know. Um, uh, I, I did play around. It's almost like a it reminds me of a sort of wide angle lens sort of thing on the um, on a camera. Um, uh, it's got a, it's got a digital um, front there, so you can uh, look through the folders and the files of what you've recorded. You can do some basic editing. Um, it's really very much all in one. You can use it just like this. So you know you could use it you know, if you're a journalist reporter. You could just use this, hold this near someone, and it'll pick up the sound awesomely. I mean, I've tried that. It's really uh, quite incredible. Um, but the you know with the boom we can you know, really get over to where the actors are sort of thing and you know sort of for medium shots picking up dialogue um, that's what the boom uh, and the mic is for and also for you know for a higher level of, of uh, sort of sensitivity and control uh, but these mics are very good and, and not 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 to be underestimated so you've got these two mics here and then you you can put in two here um, and uh, you can control the sort of mic inputs. Uh, hit record, uh, go through it, have a look, it's got a hold, 
uh, buttons so you don't press any buttons accidentally, uh, volume control, uh, it's also got remote control which actually is, I got that, I think that's really useful because I can imagine how this is going to work. Um, so this is the zoom remote control you see, so it's actually by wire, it's attached by wire. So the way I'm going to do this, you can really just operate this on, you know, one button, two button, three button, and, and that's it. You know, so, you know, record, stop, play. Yep, that sounds okay. Plug the headphones in, have a listen. Record, stop, play, have a listen. Yeah, that's okay. Record, stop. So, you know, you don't need to press many buttons because you set it up beforehand. So it looks like we're going to sample it to 96. Um, what is it? 40. God, I can't remember. I think it's 44 bit or 48 um, bit depth. Um, and then um, uh, wave uh, format uh, stereo um, is you know is probably what we're going to do. Although I'm talking to um, Dave and various other people about this idea of recording in mono because I've been reading up about uh, d recording dialogue in mono and then doing some post processing work. Um, so I need to find out a bit more about that. And uh, fortunately, you know, there's a few people in the sort of sound business I can talk to. And just clarify how that um, that, that sort of works, because uh, I I do think I was just going to set this stereo and go for it, um, but I noticed on a lot of lot of uh, websites and stuff and advice on how to use this, they talk about mono, you know mono recording uh, for stereo. Now um, mono recording for dialogue, sorry. So and what you do with this is you set the um, mod, um, you can either use what's called the multi-channel thing, um, I think multi-track uh, recording MTR. Um, for pure mono, or you can um, set to mono mix on stereo, uh, turn mono mix on, and uh, and then you. Uh, I talked to Dave about this. You, you can um, uh, remove the blank track because it's recording st in stereo uh, with Audacity, uh, which is an amazing tool. Uh, you know, Audacity is, I think, is where the sound pro -process post processing is going to happen. Um, and the other thing actually about this is it, it can make, you know, when you're recording really whacked up to 96 on the sampling, uh, you know, and it makes big wave files. I did some tests and one minute is uh, was about 35 megabytes, and which means about 2 gig an hour sort of thing for a card. So it's a fair amount, but um, again, one thing Dave pointed out was, was using compression technology, FLLC, FLAC, the flat encoder. Um, and I looked into that. I had some problems getting that running on a on a Mac, but uh, but you know typically on the on the PC it just uh, went straight up. I think it was just I I, I didn't really un understand all the ins and outs. Um, if your inputs and outputs, if you pardon the pun, um, uh, uh, you know really of of, of the, the sort of plugins and the, and the, uh, the compression um, uh, utility and stuff that I was installing. You know I think it was my understanding that that, that didn't really work so well on the Mac. Um, I don't know enough, you know, about the uh, real innards uh, you know, on the MacBook, but um, on the PC, you know, I, I can understand it a lot more. And uh, an Audacity, in particular, anyway, just plays FLAC, and um, and I can. It looks like I can write out F FLAC. So what that means is that 35 megabytes megabytes for one minute can turn into about 15 megabytes and lose none of the quality but yet I can still load it and edit it and do what I like. So I'm looking at that as a, as a, uh, as a possibility when it comes to the post-processing work. But for the moment, it's, it's going to be, you know, big uh, uh, bit depth, um, you know, way far high sampling recording. Uh, I want to start with the best, really, and then degrade uh, from there. I don't want to start halfway you know, through the sort of uh, grading scale and, and then degrade down there, I may find I need to want to actually upgrade it, uh, which you can't do, you know. So, um, anyway, so d just briefly back to this remote control, you just plug in the remote control in, a, in the side, and then off you go, uh, bang, 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 record, play, um, stop, whatever. Um, so, you know, which is quite, a, you can imagine when you're using the boom, so if I get the boom up, like this, you know, I picture myself using it, you know, so you can hold the boom and stuff, but then just with one hand, very easy, very, very light to this, it weighs nothing, um, it's got no batteries, uh, you know, I guess um, the power comes, you know, obviously from this, this wire, at least I don't think it has any batteries, uh, I don't think so, um, it's, uh, you know, it comes from that, that, that standard sort of, um, well, uh, jack. Um, so, uh, now, one interesting thing about, um, this uh, this job um, is that there is a, there is a uh, a carry for it. Uh, it's called Porter Brace, and uh, 
and it's really nice, it looks good, but it's, it's like $80 or something. And a lot of people are sort of um, moaning about that, you know, really it's just a carry and a pouch of 80 bucks. That's, you know, the, I would prefer to spend that money on, uh, I don't know, the fuel getting to Dover or, or you know, that's a few nights um, B&B really. So I'm a bit loath to do that. But what, one thing that someone did uh, show on YouTube, which I thought was really good, is they had an, an Olympus and a Canon uh, neck um, uh, strap. So uh, the Canon one I think was like a metal one and the Olympus one was, was a sort of, had, was metal but then it was rubberized uh, for real sort of strength and protection. So what you do is you loop um, through, the, through the bottom here, I don't know if you can just see that gap, almost like a normal camera thing. So you loop it through there and then you have it hanging around your neck, you say, at whatever height. So you've set the settings already before you start filming and then you leave it and then you just then all you need is a remote control but that's still around your neck you see if you can, if you need to check levels or something but um, you know really you probably would have already done all that stuff you know, you know when you're actually recording like I said you just hit record and stop and play to check and got the headphones in so there'll be headphones as well so uh, so that was a really neat tip actually and I'm going to do that because you can get a strap you know for three dollars or something uh, you know three pounds uh, you know for a really good one um, approximately you know, approximately so uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to get the pouch. I think it's just too expensive. So anyway, so that's the um, uh, recording. Now, um, then to put it into the PC, you just got a good old USB cable. Um, yet again, a, you know, a black USB cable. Uh, it looks pretty, you know, one of those standard sort of thin ones for camera at the end. Uh, you know, it'd be good if they coloured these things because they're not. I don't know and you just plug it into the USB, stick it in, and it actually comes up, there's, there's actually two outputs on here, so you've got you to make sure you set that. What, on the USB menu on here, you set USB to uh, storage, so uh, it just comes really up as a mass uh, drive on your PC, just a drive letter. Same on the Mac, I've done it on both, works great. And you can easily transfer files. That's actually how you update the firmware as well, you download a .bin file. Um, this is 1.72, um, which is the uh, latest as of 15th of March 2012. Uh, so 1.72, um, you can go to Zoom website, uh, I think it's a .jp website, uh, uh, download the firmware which is a system.bin file and then you copy that across to, uh, I think there's a USB um, actual folder on, on the device and then you hold down play and pause uh, as you're booting up and that reinstalls your new firmware in case you want to know that. Uh, fortunately I didn't actually have to do that um, because uh, I've only just got this, so it's 1.72. So the USB just wax in, uh, you can copy, but you can also set it to, um, uh, oh, what's it called? A, um, a sort of audio uh, input device. Um, so uh, I can't remember what you call it. It's a sort of audio interface. So that um, I saw it come up actually in um, Cubase because this comes with Cubase Lite, uh, just, you know, just a cut down version of Cubase. Um, I think it's version 5. Uh, Cubase 5, and on that, it was it, it, uh, one of the options for the sort of audio uh, inputs was the H4n. As soon as you plugged it in and set it, it actually came in as a sort of as another uh, audio input, uh, you know, on, on uh, uh, along with any other audio inputs you've you've got going. For example, you might have a guitar plugged in or something. So um, so again, that's more for musicians, um, I, I think. Uh, you know, I won't use that. It's just I'll just set it to USB storage, and, and that's it. So that's um, that's all. You know, that side of things. The audio. Uh, I'll do a bit more later when um, I've learned a bit more, and also there'll be other other people who will uh, present some of these things with me, and can give a better explanation of some some of the stuff once we start using. And indeed, uh, some of the problems. Like I'll come back with another video about mono um, and stereo recording. Um, and the, this whole idea of dialogue, because I need to f find out a lot more about that and, and understand it properly. Um, so, uh, the, the, uh, the other thing I was going to um, show is uh, I've got a, a redhead uh, light here. Uh, thanks to Dave Sinclair um, to, uh, for pointing these out to me on uh, eBay. Uh, these are £150. So as you can see, it doesn't take long to, to uh, you know, spend money just, you know, just on this side of things. So... Uh, um, uh, you know, wherever you can save money, that's great. But you know, lights, lights are, lights are everything really in in this film. Um, so uh, I've got three of these. These are called redheads because of that. 
um, and these flaps here that open up. There is 800 watt halogen bulbs and uh, you have these things called barn doors. Again, I'm not a lighting expert, so I, I just know the basics. Um, but fortunately, there's a lot of people that send five, uh, especially G, who's, who's my main camera and DP. Um, he, he knows all about uh, lights and using them. But you can see how you can alter you know, the, the, uh, uh, the light uh, source, uh, how much light has been given off, because these things are f f powerful. <laughs> Um, you know, I switched on all three is just to test to make sure because they only arrived today, and I plugged all three in just to make sure obviously they're working. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can almost boil an egg with these things, and they're powerful. You know, the 800 watts, that's 2,400 watts. You know, from three uh, three lights. Um, but uh, that, you know, that's really great. I'm really pleased with them. Uh, Dave uh, Sinclair saw them on um, eBay, and he got some, and he mentioned them on Facebook. You see, so and he sent me the link. So that's that's. Uh, that's great. They have a, a, um, a quite a long cable, which is good, and a decent on-off switch, um, and uh, um, you know they're pretty simple things. So uh, I hope not too much goes wrong with them. They came with um, uh, one spare bulb for the three. Uh, I need to check how much the spare bulbs are. I, I don't know. Uh, the, the way you mount them, I've, I've got. Um, these sort of tripod stand things. You get you get one for each light, um, which obviously is great. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I've taken a photo which I've put on uh, the Facebook um, for moving uh, fan page and uh, so you can see you know they're, they're pretty good really and you, you press this metal bit in uh, in order to mount on top so you would um, hold it like this and you'd unscrew uh, this nut here and uh, and then stick it on top of the uh, tripod thing on the stand and then push this silver button in here you see it there that's silver and then that sort of releases and then click and then release and it locks um, pretty good I mean pretty simple wrap it up it came with a, a really good black bag as well um, to, to hold it all in uh, so yeah pleased with that that's uh, they're great they're definitely going to do the job obviously you know you need power on set is what this means um, but there's no, there's no surprise there. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that's a result. I think that's all of um, the general uh, audio video technology. Um, th there may be a few other bits uh, sort of coming along. Uh, I mean, the main thing obviously is the camera, and I'll, and uh, and I'll, uh, G G and I will do a uh, little um, video blog of the uh, 7D, um, and we'll do that, we'll do that later. Uh, and the other thing I want to do as well is. Uh, the um, when they arrive is all the costumes. So I'll just you know tell you about those uh, the uniforms, the ca camouflage uniforms. You know just tell you uh, why they were chosen and you know what, what, what sort of each guy is wearing. And then um, the other thing is weapons. Uh, I'll do a weapons uh, video blog specifically. You know you've got, you've got the got a rifle, submachine gun, all that sort of stuff, and the hit and the, um, um, the, the, the full machine gun. So. Um, you know, I'll do a, a separate one of that. So, um, anyway, I'm sure there'll be a few more uh, updates about uh, video and sound um, uh, recording, uh, particularly on the sound um, side. Uh, you know, we're going to do some tests, with, uh, obviously, with that. And uh, not too worried about up being, you know, up here in the studio, uh, even when we're outside in the woods. Uh, fortunately, you know, the person who's helping with the sound has, has actually got an NTG3. And uh, has got the blimp. Um, it's a uh, a full windshield, uh, you know, solution. It's re it's really good. And uh, so, I think, um, you know, we'll probably use that 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 blimp. So effectively, um, it's it's a much more much more sophisticated version of this. Uh, much more, and it's much better. Um, and um, uh, but it's when we're in the fort that we need to do some sound tests about dialogue and the echoes and the. You know, closed rooms, and you know what's going to happen to sound. Uh, and uh, one good thing about the shotgun mic is it doesn't necessarily pick up, you know, when sound bounces off the walls um, and, and reflects all over the place um, because it's so directional. So, but that's something you know that I've really only really read about, and uh, I need to uh, find out a lot more about and understand it more. But I don't. I'm not going to. It sounds a bit like I'm trying to become a sound expert. All, all I want to do is just understand best practice really, you know, just, just you know, for the fort, for this feature, what's the best way of, 
of, of recording sound so that um, the, the two or three people helping actually record it um, who themselves have um, uh, you know good knowledge and, uh, uh, and and certainly in some cases better knowledge than I uh, about sound recording um, you know I, th I still think it's important that as director I should you know when they s talk about particular aspects of the microphone uh, the polarity or whatever or you know the uh, um, you know the XLR interface or something then then at least you know uh, you know I know what I know what they're talking about I may not understand all the ins and outs and I may not want to um, but at least I can you know more or less talk on the same jargon uh, technical level um, which I think is important you know which I hope I can you know do a G on the seven on the Canon 7D you know I'm never going to be uh, an expert on the Canon 7D um, you know, to be an expert is, is, is really, in my book, is a good 10 years uh, of experience, and then you can possibly qualify yourself as an expert with a, you know, with a bit of technology or whatever. So, um, uh, but anyway, anyway, so uh, yeah, that's all, and um, uh, there'll be another video blog uh, very soon, actually. Thank you.